Good morning. Welcome to Overbrook Church. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. At Overbrook, we love God, love our neighbor, and love each other. the call to worship. This morning, God, we want everything to be for your glory. We want our thoughts, our words, our songs, our church, our community, our resources, our time, our lives, all to be for you. We come together to worship you on this, your holy day. Bless our time together with your holy presence. Please join us for our hymn of praise, Open the Eyes of My Heart. to see you high and 
and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Scripture teaches us that the sacrifices that God desires from his disciples are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God promises that when we confess our sins to him, he is faithful to forgive. Our prayer of confession is that time each week that we remember these words of Scripture, our sinfulness and the gracious forgiveness of God. Join me for our prayer of confession. Holy and gracious Lord, you have declared us completely forgiven, totally accepted, and forever loved. Yet when we find ourselves in adversity or difficulty, we easily give in to despair and our minds are seduced into believing the lie that you really don't care about us. Forgive us for the ways that we doubt your goodness and provision. We ask your pardon for not living in the security of your love.
The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Let us rejoice in the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. I'd like to spend the next few moments, especially with our young disciples. Today's scripture tells us that we're to rejoice in hope, that we're to be patient in our persecution, and that we're to persevere in prayer. I thought as I read of the scripture today about balloons. And so I have two balloons here today. They're similar in every way, size, shape, color, Got them tied with similar ribbons. But let's see if they really are the same or if there's an important difference. Yep, they're different, all right. One floats and one sank. The reason that is, is because one's just filled with air while the other one's filled with helium. Now, what does that have to do with our scripture? Well, one floats because it's filled with helium. So our scripture today says to be patient in our persecution, which is another way of saying be patient when things aren't going the way you want them to go. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, let's think for an example. Let's say you're in the car, it's a hot summer day, and the air conditioning in the car is broken, and you begin to complain, it's hot in here, I can't stand it. But whoever's driving the car says, don't worry, we're almost home, and our air conditioning at home is working. It'll be better then. So suddenly, because of what they've told you, you have hope that things are going to be better. In fact, you're happy that you've learned that things are going to be better. And so knowing that things are going to be better helps you to be patient in the hot car, even though it's very uncomfortable and you don't like it. The hope of things to come help you to be patient with the way things are. But guess what? You're not likely to be successful being patient when things aren't the way you want them to be if you don't have any hope that they're going to get better. And so being filled with hope enables us to be patient when things aren't going well. Just like this balloon being filled with helium allows it to float. Now, I filled this balloon with helium from a helium tank, but how are we supposed to be filled with hope that will enable us to be patient when things aren't going our way? The Bible verse gives us that answer in the third part of the verse, which calls us to be persistent in prayer. In other words, to keep on praying. Because in prayer, we do something important. When, we, when this balloon floated, what did we do? We looked up towards the balloon. When we pray, we're talking to God. When we pray, it's as if we're looking to God. We're looking to heaven to be in conversation with God. And when we're in conversation with God through prayer, God reminds us that he loves us 
and that he cares for us and that he's protecting us and that in him we have a bright future. So it is through prayer as we look up to God that we are filled with hope and we are able to be patient when things aren't going our way. Would you please join me in our affirmation of faith as we profess together what we believe by joining together in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture today is brief but powerful. It calls us to rejoice in hope, to be patient in our persecution, and to be persistent in prayer. I do think, however, that I would take them in a different order than they're presented in Scripture, simply because I believe each one is dependent on another, but not necessarily in the order that we find them in today's Scripture. So I would start with the idea of being patient in our persecutions. And the reason I want to start there is because I believe being patient in our persecution is dependent on our rejoicing in hope. Let me give you this example. Let's say that you own a home and that as you've been walking through your home, you've noticed that the floor is increasingly squeaky. It's become squeaky enough that you're concerned and you make arrangements for someone to come and do an inspection of your home. You're going to be away on vacation for a week. You figure they can do the inspection while you're not there and there'll be a report for you from the inspection when you get home from vacation. So you come home from vacation, you check the mail. Sure enough, there's a report from the inspector. The inspector reports to you that they found termites throughout the foundation of the home and that it's going to require about $20,000 worth of work to get the house back up to standards. And if you don't do the work within the next year, the house is actually in danger of falling down. Now just imagine how that news would hit you. It, it would be hard for me. I don't have $20,000 to pay for that type of repair. I don't know what I would do. But let's back up a minute. Let's say something else happened while you were on your vacation. Let's say you're on your vacation. You've gone to the beach. You're walking on the beach. When you're done, you're walking from the beach back to your car. You see something on the ground. You bend over to pick it up. You look, it's a lottery ticket. You don't play the lottery, but you found it on the ground. You decide to look it up on the lottery website. Turns out you won a hundred million dollars with this lottery ticket that you found. You check it out, it's all legitimate. Nobody else claims the ticket. You make the phone call, everybody assures you it's legitimate. 
they, you sign the paperwork and you know that in 30 days you are going to receive $100 million. You haven't received it yet, but you've been promised and you believe the promise is credible. Now you get home, you open that report. It says you need $20,000 worth of repair work done to your home. Now, how are you feeling? I'm thinking I would feel completely different. Notice that in both scenarios, I don't have $20,000 to pay for the repair. But in the second scenario, I have the hope of not only $20,000, but of $100 million. So see me having hope of the $100 million really enables me to be patient in my persecutions. I don't have it, but I have the hope of it. Here, hope is not just another word for wish. We're not just wishing things were different. Here, the word hope is indicative of something that we have reason to believe is true and will come to be. So it is hope that enables us to be patient in our persecutions. You may say, well, Pastor Mark, I have hope, but I still have trouble being patient in my persecutions. In fact, they seem like they're going to overtake me. In such a situation, I would suggest then we examine what our hope is in. Is our hope in the climate? Is our hope in the economy? Is our hope in a particular political party or candidate? Is our hope in the stock market? Is our hope in our physical health? Is our hope in our education? Is our hope in having or obtaining a particular job or type of employment? If our hope is in any of those things, if that's the primary source of our hope, then as soon as circumstances change, then our hope gets pulled out from under us. And scripture tells us that our hope is not supposed to be in things of this world because we are not citizens of this world. When we become disciples of Jesus Christ, we become citizens of heaven. And we're not to look to things of this earth for our hope. That beautiful old hymn, I think, says it better than anything I could come up with. It says this, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Why is that important? Why does it matter where our hope lies? Because all of those other things I listed, the economy, politicians, political parties, health, wealth, the stock market, education, all of those things will crumble and fade. But God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. You see, being patient in our persecutions means that when something happens to our earthly security, when we find out that our house is crumbling around us, we realize that's bad. But we have a home not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We can find out that our health is in jeopardy or that we're even physically dying of an illness. And yet God promises us that when we come into his presence in heaven, we will have 
a new body and there'll be no sickness and there'll be no pain. We may be struggling because we feel that we've been let down by our parents. And yet scripture tells us that as we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are adopted into the family of God and God becomes our heavenly father who will never leave us nor forsake us. You see why it makes such a difference where our hope is, just as we must rejoice in our hope if we're going to be able to be patient in our persecution, so must we persevere in prayer if we're going to rejoice in our hope. And why is that? Because the enemy wants to fill our mind with lies. Scripture tells us that the enemy's out there and he's going around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And it calls us to be alert and to be of sound mind. And so prayer is essential because the enemy is always prowling around looking to fill our mind with lies, that there's no hope that all is lost, that we'll never be good enough, and that we might as well just give up. Some of you may have served this country in the Vietnam War. And if you did, you've probably heard of Hanoi Hanna. She was an agent of propaganda used by the North Vietnamese against our soldiers. She was on a radio station. The station played popular Western American music. But in between the songs, Hanoi Hanna would try to discourage our soldiers, tell them they were fighting for the wrong side, telling them that the war was really already lost, that their country didn't care for them, that their superior officers weren't looking out for them, and the best thing they could do would just be to give up and go home. Now, the North Vietnamese government knew that the United States military was a far superior military force. But they also knew that if they could get the American soldiers to believe the lies and they could get them to give up, that they could still be defeated. And that's what our enemy and the enemy of God is continuing to do, trying to get us to believe his lies. That even though God is on our side, that even though God has already given us the victory, the enemy wants us to believe that everything is against us. And no matter how hard we try and no matter how faithful we are, we're never going to win. And every little thing in the earthly and worldly circumstances around us the enemy tries to use to say, see, there's one more piece of evidence that God doesn't really love you. See, there's one more piece of evidence that God isn't really looking out for you. See, there's one more piece of evidence that God has really not given you the victory. And the best thing for you to do is just give up and come over to my side. And so it's through prayer that we are connected to God and we get to hear the voice of God and we get to be reminded of the truth of God, that God does love us, that God has made a plan for us, that God has made provision for us, that God has made a way for us where there was no way, that we are loved by God and that through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and the victory is ours. You see, we can't be patient in our persecutions 
if we can't rejoice in hope. And we can't rejoice in hope if we don't persevere in prayer. I'm not sure why this Sunday, but it seems to be old hymn Sunday for me. For as I read these scriptures, just the words of these hymns keep coming back to me. When I was growing up, I remember singing in the old men's Sunday school class at St. Luke United Methodist Church, this hymn, Dwelling in Beulah Land. Doubt and fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling, but none of them shall move me from Beulah Land. I'm standing on the mountain underneath a cloudless sky. I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply. I'm drinking from a fountain that never shall run dry, for I am dwelling in Beulah Land. Dwelling in Beulah Land really means being connected with God. Eating the manna from a bountiful supply, drinking from the fountain that never shall run dry, means we are united with God. And we have the opportunity to unite with God each day, each hour, each moment that we persevere in prayer. As we persevere in prayer, God will enable us to rejoice in hope. And as we rejoice in hope, we will be able to be more than patient in our persecutions. Amen. Please join us for our hymn of response, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, number 403. Christian giving is a responsive expression of our worship 
and stewardship of the gifts we've been given. I encourage you to continue to be faithful stewards of all that God has given you, to continue to bring forth God's tithes and your offerings as a part of your worship and response to the generosity of God. You can mail tithes and offerings to the church, Overbrook Presbyterian Church at 2605 Dumbarton Road in Rico, Virginia, 23228. Or you can give online by going to www.overbrookpresbyterian.org backslash online giving or scan the QR code on your screen with your smartphone.
us come before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come before you today in fellowship with one another, setting aside this time solely for you to offer you praise and worship, to hear you speak to us, and to leave here shaped a little bit more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. O oh God, we thank you for those times this week where we smiled and laughed, those times of friendship enjoyed, of meals shared, those times when we appreciated the beauty of your creation, when we felt a peace in our hearts, when we pause to be grateful for the life that you have given us. For all of these, Lord, and so much more, we know that we are blessed. And in gratitude and in joy, we pray for our days of difficulty and struggle, for the times when we have been less than our best, we give you thanks that you do not turn away from us and that we are never alone. Lord, we lift up our church. We want Overbrook Presbyterian Church to be a strong and vital church in this community. We want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. The need for hope, acceptance, love, and compassion is great. And Lord, you are the only answer to all of those needs. Help us to show others the way to you through our ministries, and most of all, Lord, through the lives and examples of the members of this congregation. Lord, we lift to you our country and its leaders. We pray, Lord, that they would have wisdom and discernment and we pray that their decisions would be made based on what is best for this country and not necessarily what is best for them or their political futures. We pray that egos and power plays will be set aside and that wisdom, vision, and collaboration will prevail. Lord, for those who are sick, suffering, lonely, misguided or just in need of your presence, we ask that you would teach them with your healing, with your guidance and with your peace. Lord, for the confidence and joy and hope that we have because we walk daily with you, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray together the prayer Christ taught his disciples to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us for ascending him, God Will Make a Way.
He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a In the desert will I see Heaven and earth will fade But his word will still remain He will do something new today God will make a way seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make away. He will make a way. Go now knowing that God the Father is crazy head over heels in love with you. Go knowing that God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Go experiencing the love of God through the power and indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen.